the League Cup final, Notts Forest to Liverpool. Production number double four two eight seven. Date recorded the nineteenth of March, seventy eight. Take one. Welcome to the 1978 Football League Cup final between Liverpool and Nottingham Forest. It was a day when they arrived in their thousands, wondering how Brian Clough's high-flying Nottingham Forest side would cope with Bob Paisley's Liverpool of super-efficiency, skill and proven quality. But they left talking of only one thing, the boy who made the headlines today, Forest's 18-year-old keeper, Chris Woods, who had the sort of day that most lads of his age can only dream about. And you can see today those saves from young Chris that produced those headlines. The youngster who'd never before been to Wembley, even as a spectator, and had never played in the first division. There are things about this game I think that'll delight you. And when you've seen them, we'll take you into the dressing rooms to get the verdicts from the men in the centre of it all. And more action too, as we bring you the goals from yesterday's Scottish League Cup final between Rangers and Celtic at Hampden Park. But first, let's go back to 10 to 3 yesterday afternoon and peer once more into that Wembley tunnel. The first sign of the afternoon of the Nottingham Forest manager, Brian Clough, there. And behind him, his Forest team. I wonder what sort of an afternoon it's going to be for this man who was transformed first Derby County and now Nottingham Forest with Bob Paisley, who's had so much success himself with Liverpool not least as European champions, so Brian Clough with John McGovern who'd been doubtful earlier in the week with a groin injury. The young goalkeeper there, Chris Woods. Now what's he going to uh, feel about just 18 years old? Larry Lloyd who's been to Wembley with Liverpool. Ian Bowyer who's been to Wembley for the League Cup final with Manchester City. Tony Woodcock, the man, they'll be looking for goals from him. John Robertson, very much in the running for a Scottish World Cup place. Viv Anderson, the young fullback. And England under-21, Kenny Burns, a big, strong man at the back. Martin O'Neill, the nippy little Irishman. Frank Clark, the defender, who gets in because Colin Barrett is injured. John O'Hare, the substitute. And Peter With, a man with 18 goals to his credit this season. As we come to Liverpool, Phil Thompson and Ray Kennedy and Phil Neal. All these men know what Wembley is about. Jimmy Case, who scored in the cup final last May against Manchester United. David Fairclough, the substitute, a man who scores so many important goals. Indeed, uh, Tommy Smith as well in that European Cup final in Rome. As they come now towards the tunnel entrance and the crowd. So you've seen them, and now the crowd will see them as uh, Lee Walker of the Football League leads out the two managers and the two teams for the 1978 Football League Cup final. Brian Clough, 
is in the center of all the attention. The team's then to be presented to the Right Honorable the uh, Earl of Harwood, the great Leeds United man himself. And he's having a word with Chris Woods, the 18-year-old keeper. And Peter Weir, I wonder if there'll be a special word for the manager. Enjoying every moment of it. Now the turn of Liverpool, and there, Captain Emlyn Hughes, who's almost got a season to get to this place now. And look how relaxed he is. He might get around to presenting his team as well. To Phil Thompson. And to Ray Kennedy, who's been here with Arsenal as well as with Liverpool. Phil Neal there. To the presentations, here are the teams, Liverpool, their expected and announced side, Clements, Neil, Smith, Thompson, Kennedy, Hughes, Dalgleish, Case, Highway, McDermott and Callaghan, with Fairclough, the substitute. And no late scares in the Nottingham Forest side, Woods, Anderson, Clark, who's in for Barrett, who's injured, McGovern, Lloyd and Burns, O'Neill, Bowyer, with Woodcock and Robertson with their substitute O'Hare. The referee Pat Partridge from Durham. So, Brian Clough already in shirt sleeves. Peter Taylor and Jimmy Gordon. And away we go. Liverpool in a change strip of wide attacking the goal to our left. It was Forrest who won the toss to uh, be able to play in their familiar red shirts with white shorts. Oh, Kenny Burns lost it in the air, Dalgleish is through. Is this going to be a goal right at the start? It's not, it could have been a goal in 17 seconds, but Dalgleish incredibly lost his head. Well, look at the pain on his face. Well, that was a bad mistake by Kenny Burns in the opening seconds. Over his head it went, and Dalgleish had a great chance. There it is over his head. Dalgleish with a great chance. Woods did well there. He covered it well. And Dalgleish lost his head badly. That's a throw to Nottingham Forest. Kenny Burns. Finding Martin O'Neill. Anderson has gone ahead of him. With... Back again for O'Neill, a touch for Bill Anderson. But stopped by Kennedy, McGovern. Oh, nice bit of play by Martin O'Neill. Well, my word, that was no more than uh, six inches wide of the far post. He curled that in beautifully. I thought for a moment that was going to be three or four yards wide. But this tricky little Irishman coming into the Liverpool penalty area, look how close in the end that is from that far post. Larry Lloyd, now Robertson. Played in for Boya. Very underrated player, Boya, but he's done well this season for Forrest. Kenny Burns, oh, it's planted too firmly. Burns, so long the steady influence this season for Forrest, is taking a little time to find his feet, I think, at the moment. There's a lovely cross there by 
to uh, Kennedy from McDermott. And here's McGovern. Hughes. Liverpool holding the whip hand at the moment. Jimmy Case. What a powerful shot he's got. And there's another one. But wide. Woods was scrambling across his goal. A lot of space here for Jimmy Case. Lining it up. Always going just that little bit wide. Peter Weir taken nicely on his chest. Here's Bowyer. Played through for Woodcock. Now. Woodcock with the shot just wide. And the first time that Forrest have exploded after Liverpool had made perhaps the more comfortable start. Nice piece of interplay with their de Boya. Woodcock on the turn, beating Phil Neal, but also beating the post. Phil Robertson keeping it in expertly, faced by Jimmy Case, and the ball in play, finding this time Ian Boya. Now it's out of play. Might be a free kick. It is a free kick for Nottingham Forest for the foul on Tony Woodcock. Larry Lloyd up again. Two, four, five, six red shirts in and around that Liverpool penalty area. Peter with right in there. Tony Woodcock with a shot. Bowyer hoping to turn it, but the whistle had gone. Wasn't a linesman's flag, it was a referee's decision there, and offside against Ian Bowyer. A situation that was always looking a little bit interesting there for Nottingham Forest. Woodcock couldn't get a clear shot on goal, and Bowyer caught offside. Tremendous kick by Clements, and a good jump by Larry Lloyd as well. McGovern, oh, he's given it away to Jimmy Case. Oh, my word, that could hardly have been closer. Well, that would have really have been of Nottingham Forest's own making. The ball given away here by John McGovern, straight into the path of all people of Jimmy Case of the blistering shot, and how close it was with Chris Wood stranded. Hughes. Kennedy Hughes Highway Callaghan Curling in, a dangerous one there Larry Lloyd is up and he had to be up well Case, oh well saved there and McGovern can get it away and Case has got it back a bad pass out that by the Nottingham Forest side, and another good save by the youngster. Hit straight at him with great power, it's true, but he held on to it from Terry McDermott. The first one was a very good save indeed. This is the second one from McDermott, but he also made a very good reaction save from Jimmy Case. And here we are now with Hughes. Callaghan. Thompson right in there. Burns. And Boya. Well, he was pushed there. There was a clear push by Eminem Hughes on Boya. It's got to be a free kick, if anything, to Nottingham Forest, surely. But Eminem's got away with it, and it's a throw. With turning well. Nice pass there for Woodcock. And away he goes. Smith is after him. Neil cutting across. Turned inside and he very nearly found Peter with, but Tommy Smith was back. What a brilliant break though by Tony Woodcock. On he went with Smith after him. He turned it inside, but uh, it didn't quite reach Peter with. Hughes. getting that one well, and Woodcock's on his way, Clements is out of his goal, look how far he was out, he must have been a good 12 yards outside his penalty area, 
but it worked. Woodcock striding through again, just on side. And just look how far Clemens comes out. He's on side. And Clemens in the end gets it away. Now Bowie. That's a good looking shot. And Forrest are having a better time of it. Still no goals with ten minutes to go to half time. But Ian Bowie with six goals in six league cup ties this season. Letting fly left foot from 20 yards over the Liverpool crossbar. attention I think Brian Duff had that in mind at that moment so they're a fair way away it's very difficult for a manager there to attract a player's attention Dalglish oh what a good turn there on Larry Lloyd he skinned him there highways up cases up on the far side Forrester backing off now Case. Oh, and now McDermott, and a goal! They're off their seats on the bench, and it's been disallowed. Well, what was the infringement there? There must have been an offside as that ball swept past Chris Woods from Terry McDermott, and Liverpool are disappointed. No, they say it wasn't. But as Terry McDermott struck it, there must have been an offside. Phil Neal. Anderson not getting that one. It looked a bit like a shove in the back too on Kennedy. Highway being challenged by Frank Clark. And a throw to Liverpool. In the last minute of the first half now. Case playing it back, highway, Neil hitting in the early ball there towards Ray Kennedy, he got up well, he nodded it down well, the only problem was that it was always going wide. Good early ball played in there by Liverpool, up above them all was Ray Kennedy but the direction was awful. Liverpool have had the better of this first half. They've looked the more purposeful side. And here's Dalglish. Terry McDermott always seems to be a man spare as Callaghan was there. And indeed as Emlyn Hughes is here. And that's a dangerous looking cross. Played behind. Oh my word. Almost into his own goal by Frank Clark. Well the youngsters reactions were good there. Emlyn Hughes' is cross. And in the end it could have been an own goal but for Chris Woods. Coming right to half-time now. And indeed, there is the half-time whistle. No goals, so the managers go off to those uh, Wembley dressing rooms now. It's Brian Clough. Maybe to try and put a little bit more fire into Forest. Terry McDermott, who had the ball in the Forest net, only to have it to ruled out, presumably for offside. And indeed, he almost got on the score sheet as well. Frank Clark in the very last moment of the first half. An own goal, but it was saved on the line by goalkeeper Chris Woods, who did all that Forrest would have asked of him in this first half. Uh, and he'll be glad to have got that 45 minutes behind him. Liverpool looking the more purposeful side, but as yet they haven't broken Forrest down. So we leave Wembley for a moment with a half-time score then at the stadium. In this Football League Cup final, Liverpool nil, Nottingham Forest nil, and we'll be back with the second half.
Welcome back to Wembley. Nil-nil in this Football League Cup final. Nottingham Forest in the dark shirts now attacking the goal to our left. Forest, who've got this far by beating West Ham, Notts County, Villa, Berry, and Leeds. Liverpool by way of Chelsea, Derby, Coventry, Wrexham and Arsenal. And Liverpool, in fact, looking more purposeful, the more business-like in the first half. They'd had more of the game without any question. Now it's Neil. Highway. Neil. Callaghan. Case has stolen into that Nottingham Forest penalty area. Well, that wasn't a good ball there for Hughes, but Kennedy picked it up before O'Neill could get to it. One of these little situations where the ball constantly just seems to be without outside the grasp of Nottingham Forest. And here's Aaron Hughes. Going a long way forward, good save! Oh, what a good save by Chris Woods. Well, that tells what a good save it was. Eminem Hughes could hardly believe it. Caught that on his right foot superbly, 20 yards out, and the youngster was across beautifully. The first really authentic save that a goalkeeper's had to make in this game, and it's made by Chris Woods, and it's made well. McDermott, just a little nod in there. Larry Lloyd getting it away not very far. And this time, Chris Wood saves well from Kennedy. Well, that's Callaghan, but there's an offside against Case, who hadn't got back quickly. Kenny Dalglish. Robertson. They're giving the ball away a lot at the moment, Forrest. And that challenge by Clark didn't stop Kenny Dalglish. Now Kennedy. Thundering a left foot shot. Oh, and he's lost it this time. And he just about saved it before Dalglish could get in. Kenny Dalglish just concerned for a moment that he may have injured Chris Woods. The first semblance of a mistake there by Chris Woods. That shot by Kennedy. He didn't hold it. He made life difficult for Dalglish and the luck went his way. The cross coming in now from Callaghan and a goal kick. Pat Partridge just making sure that Chris Wood's right wrist is OK, where he must have taken a knock from Kenny Dalglish. Nine minutes of the second half gone. Of course, there is provision for extra time in this game, and Bob Paisley wanting one or two changes made in that Liverpool formation. All played nicely there, and a good interception by Phil Neal. Peter with. And now Callaghan. Made into the path of Terry McDermott. Jimmy Case now. Ian Callaghan. Phil Neal. Dalgleish. Dermott, didn't quite link up with Dalglish that time. Forrest massing in force, but at the expense of a free kick. Given away by Ian Bowyer. So, a moment of anxiety. His voice won't carry that far. Phil Neal stepping over it, Jimmy Case, will he blast it? No, he's chipped it towards Ray Kennedy, too high for him. Viv Anderson has missed his kick completely. And Phil Thompson playing it back for Emlyn Hughes. Forrest making one or two very elementary mistakes. And again, young Chris Woods getting beautifully behind a shot from Terry McDermott. Well, he's turning out to be a real hero. John O'Hare, just a question of who they're going to take off. I wouldn't be at all surprised if it's not John McGovern, who really has struggled with his groin. And it's Kennedy coming forward again for Liverpool. A long shot deflected, and again, Woods well behind it. Martin O'Neill battling away, giving away the free kick to Liverpool. 
And in fact, it's John McGovern who's going off. There he is, number four. The, uh, they've attracted the referee's attention. John McGovern, who'd never been to Wembley before, although he's been a pro for some ten years. It can't be the happiest of places for him as he goes off to the bench. He's really suffered, he's been in a lot of pain. Phil Neal to Ian Callaghan. Case. Case. Well, Dalglish. Look at the agony there. And again, this uh, deadly finisher, Kenny Dalglish. Found a yard of space on the edge of the box, did well there, but a wide of the goal again. And Liverpool having that attack broken up by Kenny Burns, finding John Robertson. Takes the free kick for Nottingham Forest. Larry Lloyd's going in there. Oh! Well, a goalkeeper who hasn't had much to do suddenly called in to make uh, really what uh, should have been quite a simple save. That uh, cross from Robertson uh, came floating in. Larry Lloyd was there, and it was a fumble by Clements. That's with Highway. Damn it. Spread wide to Kennedy. The gentle nod back for Hughes. Callaghan. And highway again. Surely only a matter of time before Liverpool do break this deadlock, but uh, it's still nil-nil. It's a corner for Liverpool, and it's eight minutes to go. So John O'Hare, having done his boots up, gets back into that. Forest penalty area as Highway now tries an in-swinging corner, curling in there, and Woods didn't get to that one. Oh, and he did get to that though, from Jimmy Case. He missed the first one, but uh, he just got down to that one from Case. One minute. Now Woodcock. Little pass played in there to O'Hare. Now Woodcock. Oh, and it took a great save. Can O'Neill turn it back? Can Wiz turn it in? My word, he still hasn't gone out of play. But Forrest came within a fraction of a second, really, of snatching that game dramatically away from Liverpool. Woodcock on the turn. Got a shot in, and it was a truly great save by Ray Clements. And Martin O'Neill couldn't quite turn it back. He got it to With, but With couldn't turn it in. Another hard look at Pat Partridge's watch. And that's the end of 90 minutes. And so we face 30 minutes of extra time. Basically, because of this man, Chris Woods, the 18-year-old, who's had a marvellous game. And also, you must admit, because of this man, who brought off that miraculous save from Tony Woodcock right at the death. Well, the extraordinary thing is, look, Brian Clough and Peter Taylor sitting on the bench there when you would have thought the managers would have been straight out there to tell their players what they want. In fact, he sent John McGovern. Bob Paisley's going out, in fact, to have a word with the referees. Well, David Fairclough there, stripping off. Liverpool clearly are going to bring on their substitute. 
at the start of this period of extra time. So Ray Kennedy is the man who's gone off, and David Fairclough the man who's come on for Liverpool. So here we go into the first period of extra time, and a long, long kick by <laughs> Ian Callaghan trying to get a goal in something like four seconds at the start of the period of uh, extra time. It didn't work out. He thought he might catch Chris Woods cold, but he didn't. 15 minutes each way. McDermott. And O'Hare. And Robertson. That light's coming on. Lloyd, Anderson, well he's gone in a long way and uh, it wasn't the shot he wanted, but that's the first time that Viv Anderson, who's got a great reputation as uh, coming forward and having a whack at goal, has got anywhere near the Liverpool penalty area. any messages that Brian Clough and Peter Taylor wanted for the players before this period of extra time. Clark beating Fairclough, here's Woodcock, Bowyer, holding on to a little too long, the strong challenge from Tommy Smith taking it away from him and away for Liverpool now comes Fairclough with Dalgleish supporting him. McDermott away on the left, here's McDermott. Oh, what a good catch. That's McDermott, but that's the hero. What a tremendous afternoon young Chris Woods has had. Well, I wonder if we're going to get a second successive goal this League Cup final at Wembley. Last year, Aston Villa and Everton. But here's O'Neill. in now, Larry Lloyd trying to press that down and trying again and in fact it's Woodcock over that Liverpool crossbar Larry Lloyd right in there in really uh, dangerous position that for Liverpool and nodded uh, rather hooked over in the end by Woodcock It's a Liverpool throw. Fairclough. All still in play. Fairclough very shrewdly finding Ian Callaghan there. But Callaghan hitting it straight at O'Neill. Played forward for Peter Wiz to go bounding forward. O'Hare up with him. The whistle had gone for the end of the first period of extra time which on my watch finished about 15 seconds early. So there is a, a straight change around here. And the managers naturally have to stay put now. A smile there on the face of Brian Clough and some animation on the Liverpool bench from Ronnie Moran. Chris Woods getting a great reception at the other end from the Forest fans at that end of the field, which he well deserves. And Pat Partridge making the last adjustment to the watch. There are now 15 minutes of this Wembley final to go, and still the deadlock to be broken. Burns. This is where we might get the mistakes the agony and the joy that go with it. 
because now there must be 22 very tired footballers out there, 20 at least, other than the two substitutes. Anderson. Burns playing it straight to Dalgleish. Fairclough's onside. Larry Lloyd played him there. Brought down by Lloyd. And a yellow card for Larry Lloyd. Deliberately chopping down David Fairclough in full flight. It was Lloyd who played him onside. There's Fairclough on his way. And Lloyd going in there, as you can see, taking the man and quite properly getting a yellow card. So, a free kick for Liverpool to be taken by Emlyn Hughes. Driven in there. Kenny Burns bravely got his head in the way. McDermott touching it now. Dalgleish on the turn once more. Well, that was a good piece of defence by Lloyd. But it's another corner for Liverpool. About 11 minutes to go. McDermott now to Neil. And now for Callaghan. Hughes, Thompson, Nick Donagain for Fairclough. Getting in behind that defence and another corner for Liverpool. Case, Case, the little chip. Smith turning it back, but behind and a goal kick. And Lloyd now breaking out for Nottingham Forest. Trying to flick that pass away to with. And Lloyd went down, and I think Tommy Smith is going to get the yellow card now. Well, as Larry Lloyd went roaring forward. Tommy Smith hacked him down. Here's Lloyd coming out quickly. And Tommy Smith going in there. Hughes. Oh, what a good cross there. And Lloyd meeting it. Case! Chance there! And it's gone away. Well, Jimmy Case, the man with the ferocious shot. Missed a chance for Liverpool there. Hughes getting it in. Larry Lloyd really only half getting ahead to it. Hit on the volley and always going up. Got a minute to go. And the bench are signalling furiously to the Forest players that there is one minute to go only. O'Neill. Well, Forrest very nearly stole it in the last minute of normal time with that shot by Tony Woodcock, superbly saved by Clements. And now this has come their way as O'Neill is brought down, but the whistle has gone and it's all over. In fact, we didn't play the full 15 minutes of the second half uh, of extra time. And it means they've got to play again at Old Trafford on Wednesday. Kenny Dalgleish must regret particularly that... Uh, chance of his that went begging in the opening 15 seconds but the real hero for Nottingham Forest 18 year old Chris Woods he'd never been to Wembley before inside the stadium now he's been there and he's played supremely well showing so few signs of nerves one little mistake that he very quickly corrected and very very correct goalkeeping for the whole of the time he'll be pleased with himself and he's got to do it all again like everybody else now at Old Trafford on Wednesday night. Colin Barrett there giving him a, a little ha warm handshake. Peter Taylor going off with Joe Fagan. And the fans, unbelievable to think the two sides like Forrest and uh, Liverpool should have played for 120 minutes and not provided them with a single goal. Well, it means, of course, the teams must replay at Old Trafford Manchester on Wednesday night, a match that you can see exclusively on ITV at 10.30 on Wednesday. And indeed, you're bound to see a definite result this time. The Football League have decided that if it's level after extra time, the match will be decided on penalties. But what about young Chris Woods? As he combed his hair in the dressing room afterwards, there must have been a warm glow about him. Certainly there was warm praise from Liverpool's Ray Clements. <laughs> well, it's tremendous. I mean, it's a tremendous... 
apparently nobody doubted his ability. I mean, the lad playing in the England youth team, so he's got the ability anyway. It was a tremendous test of his temperament out there today. And he made a couple of easy saves early on, which obviously gave him confidence. And then he went on from there, and uh, he held virtually everything. In fact, he only dropped one ball, and he got away with that. Kenny got onto it quick, but he managed to get down and smother it out for a corner. So, uh, full of praise for the lad, you know. Just hope he doesn't play out that on Wednesday. No. You thought, you thought before the game, you told us you thought he might freeze. There was absolutely no sign of that, is it? Well, obviously, he did a lot better than I did in my first cup <laughs> final, because I did freeze, and there was no signs of that whatsoever. So it was a big day for Chris, and like I said before, and, you know, he's got nothing to prove. He's just going to go out and play and enjoy it. But uh, he certainly proved a point today, you know, what a great goalkeeper he, he, he's likely to be. What was it about him that most impressed you? Uh, confidence, I think. Um, you know, he made some very good saves on the floor, but, you know, he came and took a couple of balls in the air, which, uh, you know, I, th I felt was the, the making of um, what goalkeeping's all about, and I think he showed there, in those two instances, um, real assurance and confidence. He did really well, and uh, Wembley's not the best place to come as a youngster, and that, uh, I mean, I know at my age now, I'm a bit... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, as I say, he did tremendously well. Well, I thought I would be, you know, a little bit nervous, more nervous than what I was, but when I got out there, when I went out for a walk, I felt, you know, with all the other players around me, it was, you know, a really tremendous feeling. And then when we went out, I was just looking forward to it, that was all. Yeah. Because you made some good saves, didn't you? Which, which pleased you most of all? Um, I think the one that pushed past the post. I was lucky with the other one that, you know, rebounded out. I just see him kept coming in. I didn't think. Yeah, well, the one you, the one that, that you half say, I think, was from Ray Kennedy. And, yeah. And you just got there before Kenny Dalglish. That's right. Yeah. Really smashed it against me, Riss. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. But it was a tremendous save from Emlyn Hughes that you made when you went across the face of the goal. Um. I can't say you've forgotten that. I don't know. <laughs> I can't think of it actually. Does it, does it in fact, does the whole Wembley experience become a bit of a blur as it goes on or what? Um, what were you conscious of out there? A lot of noise or...? I was you know, trying to put the noise, you know, out of my mind really. It's just concentrate on playing in the game. Uh, you know, just trying to talk to the players and mm. they talking to me. What did they say to you during the course of the game? They was, you know, just helping me all the time, just inspiring me, yeah. telling me you know, you're doing this right, and it was really great. Yeah. Did any of the Liverpool players say anything to you? Um, not many of them. They, you know, they all says, you know, good luck before the match. But Did they? Yeah. Did they? Ray Clements, he was great. He shook me hands like, and I know him because he knows, you know, John Middleton. Like. Yes, who used to be an Olympic yeah, Forest. Yeah. 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 And, and may I ask you what Brian Clough said to you at the end of the game? Um, he says, you know, congratulations, well played. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. And you got your whole family here, hadn't you? Yes, yeah. yeah. Somewhere, I can't find Somewhere. <laughs> no, but they saw you all right. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah, so. This must go down as the greatest day in your football career so far. Oh, it is, by yeah. a long, long way. Yeah. Thoroughly enjoyed it. But yesterday's goalless draw was not down simply to Chris Woods, because at the other end, that superb technician Ray Clements brought off a brilliant save in the dying moments of normal time. From Tony Woodcock, we see it from behind Ray's goal here. And really, it denied Forrest a victory. They never seem likely to get Ray Clements. Well, that's, that's what's been Ray's strength over the years, hasn't it? I mean, he's been virtually unemployed for the last seven years. <laughs> and he's called on to make saves, and he does them. That's why he's the best in the business. Mind you, you got the ball in the net once, didn't you? Yes, yes. It must have been very close. We, we didn't see... Uh, well, I don't know what the TV showed up. Uh, no, we haven't, we haven't looked closely at it ourselves yet, Bob, but I think it must have been presumably for an offside, wasn't it? Well, the linesman gave it, and uh, I thought, uh, you know, we didn't see anybody there. And the linesman was right. In fact, all three officials had a good game yesterday. Here's Jimmy Case playing the ball inside, and as Terry McDermott connects, look on the left, Kenny Dalgleish beyond the last line of Nottingham Forest players, and clearly within the eye line of Chris Woods, the goalkeeper, interfering with play, and the decision to rule out the goal absolutely right. But there was another incident that provoked some comment. The surprising thing, I think, to a lot of people was to, to see you and, and Brian Clough sitting on the bench between full-time and extra-time when managers mostly go out of the field and start giving a few more orders. Well, what more can you do? You know, they, they see enough... Well, when did you take... When, when was that decision taken? 
Well, we just played off the cuff. We did this many years ago at Tottenham when it was a draw at full time. And we went on to win 5-3. I saw no point. I thought they'd pull the self around at that stage. I fancied an extra time. There was nothing we could have done to help them. They were they was in good order. There's nothing we could do. Otherwise, we would have gone on. How did you keep them calm down? So, I mean, presumably a lot of work must have gone on before the game to make sure they didn't freeze on the day. Well, we've been talking about it now for the last uh, 10 days. You know, all the work's been done over the last 10 days. I thought the crunch match in the tension match was the semi-final against Leeds. I think that drained us of all, all we had, as you might say. Today was a bonus for us. We really enjoyed today, and that's the way we, we came into this match, to enjoy it. I must see seeing you squirming on the bench, you didn't seem to be enjoying it that much. I was cold, <laughs> and I didn't like Brian's language. <laughs> He's getting a bit worked up again, was he? Just a little, but uh, overall, you know, he's, he's delighted. And so, we all are. You're confident about the replay? Well, we're always confident. We don't always win, but we're always confident. The, the match was there for them to take and win, and they didn't. And we go Wednesday with another, another opportunity, and our, our fancy is stronger. We had so much of the game today, and we've got nothing out of it, and now the fear is trying to get going again for Wednesday. Well, so much then for the Football League Cup final. A knife-edge game, really, that needed just a couple of goals to make it into a great one. And maybe those goals will arrive at Old Trafford on Wednesday night. Remember, it's a game you can see exclusively on ITV that night at 10.30. But there were goals in the Scottish League Cup final between Rangers and Celtic at Hampden Park yesterday in front of a crowd of 55,000. Let's go up to Glasgow now, join the cameras of STV, the commentators Arthur Monford, Rangers in the dark shirts. Advancing, chasing with Jackson. Balson winning it. McCluskey in the centre, Aiken as well. Balson doing well to turn the big space for himself. The first corner of the match to Celtic. So McCluskey with the corner. Headed in by Aiken. Forsyth caught in possession. Balson out in front, a chance for Glavin. A really good chance there for Ronnie Glavin. Tenacious play by Advance and setting up the chance. Uh, Cooper. Lynch intercepting. Advance and turning it down. Picked up by Glavin. Celtic of an extra man forward now. Aiken going wide on the right. Glavin tries a long one. Spotted late by Kennedy, still dangerous. Aiken out in front, Advalson moving in. Tremendous recovery there by Kennedy, saving the day for Rangers. Now Smith quickly to the other end. Cooper and Mart. Back to Smith. Smith going on the outside, but running into trouble, turns it out in front, Cooper scores! Cooper scores for Rangers, six minutes from half-time, Dave Cooper's seventh goal of the season, made by Gordon Smith, finished off by Dave Cooper's powerful left foot, Smith knocked the ball in field, first the ball to Cooper, Smith had to come back for it, then got his head down and went for the line, it looked as if he had lost his chance, but he recovered well, crossed it from the byline, and Cooper left-footed high into the net, but the first goal of the match. This is Aiken. Dye. McCluskey. Sneddon is onside, that's a good move. Edvaldson, goal! Out of nothing, Celtic score. Ed Valtzen, his tenth goal of the season. Five minutes to go, and Celtic from nowhere have fought back and scored a tremendous equaliser. All happened down the right-hand side. Sneddon made ground on the right. But his crossover, Ed Valtzen moved in with Jackson. Kennedy came off his line. The ball finished up in the back of the net, and sensationally, Celtic have equalised. Perry again to the far side, this is McCluskey now. Good running by McCluskey, there's the cross. Tempting one and it could still be dangerous. Well, 
Robertson throwing it in. Kennedy off his line. Headed down by McDonald. Turned in. Stopped on the line. McCluskey thumped it in and it was Derek Johnston who was there to make that save. Wilson's corner hit deep across goal. Headed down by McDonald. McCluskey turned and drove it in as Kennedy couldn't get back. Johnston was on the line. The ball came spinning out and Rangers breathed again. Three minutes remaining. Smith to Johnston. Miller coming up as the extra man. There's his cross. There's Latchford. The ball spinning this. Headed in by Smith. And the referee's giving a goal. Gordon Smith scores. Three minutes from the end of extra time. His 23rd goal of the season. And for the second time in the match, Rangers go into the lead. Alec Miller came up on the overlap, picked up that ball wide, made space very quickly in field, flooded it across, right-footed, Latchford committed himself, punched it away, and Smith followed up, headed the ball into the net to make it Rangers 2, Celtic 1. And there's the Scottish League Cup, and there's John Gregg receiving it from Mrs Cathy Weir, the wife of Jim Weir, the long-serving official of Stenhouse Muir, who was, of course, a member of the League Management Committee until last year. And there's the acknowledgement of that victory by the Rangers fans away to our left. So, a victory for Rangers, and congratulations to them. And that's it. There's another big footballing occasion tonight, though, with the Professional Footballers Association Awards Dinner, and you can see it on ITV at 10.45. I can tell you one thing, Chris Woods, that headline-making young forest keeper, does not get an award. But after his performance at Wembley yesterday, he clearly is one to mark down for the future. Forest, and here's Aaron Hughes, going a long way forward, good save! Oh, what a good save by Chris Woods! Now Kennedy, thundering a left foot shot, oh, and he's lost it this time! Forrest making one or two very elementary mistakes. And again, young Chris Woods getting beautifully behind a shot from Terry McDermott. McDermott away on the left. Here's McDermott. Oh, what a good catch. That's McDermott, but that's the hero.